welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Shayla. This is Penny Lane. And this is Bali. This is really awkward. <laughs> it's sucking on my finger. <laughs> and we are super happy that you're here. Thanksgiving is coming up, and if you didn't know, I'm plant-based. I don't need any animal products. I, I'm scared to say the word vegan because I'm not 100% vegan because I do eat honey, and I've gotten yelled at for that. So I'm very careful about using the word vegan. However, I don't eat any animal products, and so with Thanksgiving coming up, I keep getting asked, well, what do you eat on Thanksgiving? You don't eat turkey. There's lots of things that I eat on Thanksgiving, and I'm gonna share my favorite 100% plant-based recipes with you today. They are absolutely delicious. Like I said, they're 100% vegan and super easy to make. So without further ado, <laughs> let's get started. For this recipe, you will need some arugula and baby kale, one apple, I'm using a Honeycrisp apple because they're my favorite, a lemon, a half cup of pomegranate seeds, one shallot, two to three cups of butternut squash, four to six tablespoons of pistachios, four tablespoons of raw pumpkin seeds, one tablespoon of vegan Dijon mustard, one tablespoon of pumpkin seed oil, some avocado oil, some sherry vinegar, salt, pepper, and garlic powder. The harvest salad. So to start with the salad, I just put my lettuce in my serving dish. Again, I'm using baby arugula and baby kale. So once you get your lettuce all set up in the dish that you're gonna serve your salad in, let's roast the butternut squash. So I'm doing the lazy girl's version of this whole Thanksgiving meal because I got a lot of the veggies cut already because anybody got 10 minutes. I just felt like it wasn't too much more to just buy it already chopped and it was much easier for me. So I have my chopped butternut squash and I'm going to drizzle some avocado oil over the top just a little bit. I'm starting to read the <laughs> Toss everything so that it is all covered. Okay. Then we're going to take a baking sheet, line it with, I double lined it because I'm a little OCD, but you know, you can do you. Um, I put foil down on the bottom just to protect the sheet so that it doesn't get super dirty. And then I'm putting parchment paper on top, line it all out. Now I'm going to take my garlic powder, salt and pepper and just lightly season. I'm using pink salt because garlic powder and a little bit of black pepper. I already preheated my oven to 350 degrees. I probably should have told you that. But I'm telling you now, sorry. <laughs> and just a heads up, all of the recipes that we are making that need to go in the oven, all are gonna be baked at 350 degrees. So you can just go ahead and do that the morning of when you start cooking so that your oven's ready to go. We're gonna pop this in the oven and bake. I would say for about 20 to 30 minutes, but it really depends on your oven. My oven's on the more vintage side for putting it nicely, so things take a little bit longer, but if you have a newer oven, it might take less time. Just keep an eye on it. You basically want the butternut squash roasted until golden brown. Now let's make our dressing. So to start, I'm just going to Squeeze the juice of one lemon into my little dish. And we'll do a tablespoon of pumpkin seed oil. Lots of antioxidants, really good for the skin and also so festive. And we will do a tablespoon of vegan Dijon mustard. We're gonna start with a tablespoon of sherry vinegar, but I might add more depending on how it tastes. We're just gonna whip that up a little bit, okay? I should also mention that I have put all of the recipes to everything that I'm making today up on my blog and the link is down in the description box below. So if you want to print them out, I have a whole vegan Thanksgiving shopping list that I made for you too, that you can download and print. So that is up there. As far as the dressing goes, I think what we have now is a good place to start and then you kind of have to just taste it and see how you like it. I'm probably going to add Add a little bit of salt and pepper to mine as well. That's good. I'm not gonna lie. It's really good. The pumpkin seed 
oil has such a good flavor to it. It's super like nutty and seedy, if <laughs> that makes sense. And then the sherry vinegar is more like sweet and tangy.
a touch more of everything just to make sure I have enough to fully coat on the sprouts. So I'm just going to set this aside and once the Brussels sprouts are nearly done roasting, you want them pretty close to being done because once you put this in, this sauce will easily burn and kind of char and it doesn't taste good. So we just kind of put this back in with the almonds just for a short amount of time to finish it off. So make sure the Brussels sprouts are, I would say, 95 to 97% cooked before you add the sauce on. Okay, it is time to take the Brussels sprouts out and coat them and add our slivered almonds to them. Let's do our almonds first. Once again, eyeballing. You don't want too many. Just a few sprinkled throughout here. Now we're going to take our sauce and literally just drizzle it on. So make sure everything is nice and coated. Then we will throw this back in the oven for maybe 5 to 10 minutes. Yum, these look amazing. These are perfect. So everything's just slightly golden brown, nicely cooked. That was about, I would say, probably five to eight minutes. For this recipe, you will need six to eight Yukon Bold Potatoes or Yellow Potatoes, some fresh or already minced garlic, vegan butter, unsweetened plain almond milk, really important that you don't get the vanilla one, and salt and pepper. I love mashed potatoes. I could eat mashed potatoes every month of the year. It's my favorite. This is such an easy recipe, and to be honest with you, the thing that takes the longest is boiling the so I already did that previously because it took about an hour boiling on my stove. So I cleaned them off, boiled them with the peel on, and I've let them cool so they're much easier to handle now. And now we will just put the mashed potatoes together. This is the easiest part. We're going to start by sauteing some garlic. You can crush a fresh clove of garlic if you have it or have time. I actually forgot to grab it at the store, but I always keep chopped garlic in my fridge. So I'm just going to use a tablespoon of this in a pot with a tablespoon of vegan butter. Okay, so I'm gonna put this pot over medium heat. So we just really want to get this, I don't know what we want to get this to look like. I'm not Rachel Ray, I don't know the term, okay? <laughs> Cooked. So this is starting to nicely brown, just slightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off and cover it peel our potatoes. I'm not going to be too meticulous about peeling them. I kind of like the peels, but the peels are really hard to digest, so I'm going to get rid of most of the peels. All right, our potatoes are peeled, and now we are going to take them in with our garlic and vegan butter. I'm going to turn this back on on medium heat add my potatoes and I'm going to kind of squish them as I put them in. Well, I love mashed potatoes. I really don't make them frequently. So I actually don't own a potato masher because I just don't like to keep a lot of stuff that I don't use frequently in my house. But if you have one, now would be a great time to pull that out. <laughs> okay, let's add some more baking butter in here. This is about a tablespoon. I just because it's a freaking holiday and I never eat this stuff. Boom. Balance people. So I'm gonna mix that in a bit and let that start to melt. Now I'm going to add some of this plain unsweetened almond milk. By the way, way to go Trader Joe's. Just almonds and water. I love that. This is new. I've never seen this there before. I'm eyeballing this guys. But I think I'll probably end up using a half cup. Pour a little bit in to start. Really wish I had a mashed potato masher right now, guys. I'm not kidding. So like a whisk. Whisk. Hmm. I have a 
foamer. I don't think that that will work though. Okay. No mashed potato masher. You know what? It's okay. They're gonna do so good. No mashed potato masher. Those are pretty good, you guys. I think the trick to that is like boiling them long enough and letting them get really soft. Then it's just really easy to mash. But they're not completely like, I don't like like liquidy potatoes. You know what I mean? I like it a little bit chunky. So we're just gonna mix this up. I'm gonna actually turn the heat off on this. These are whipped, okay? They're literally whipped vegan garlic mashed potatoes. Yum. These are done, guys. How easy is that? For this recipe, you will need a loaf of vegan bread. I used sourdough that I got at Whole Foods, salt and pepper, vegetable broth, a half cup to a cup of chopped celery, half a cup of onion, some fresh sage, and some Better. Now it's time to make our stuffing. The first step in making this stuffing, if you want to use fresh bread, is the day before you cook your stuffing, you need to rip it into little cubes, or you can cut it into cubes, and leave it out so that it kind of becomes a little stale, if I'm going to be honest. Yesterday I went to the bakery at Whole Foods, I got a loaf of their vegan sourdough bread, just ripped it into little pieces, stuck it in this bowl, and left it out overnight, and it's the perfect consistency. It's not too hard, but it's nice and kind of crispy feeling. So that's step one. The second step is we're gonna chop our veggies. And that's 
throw it in the oven like this. And I usually end up baking it for about 45 minutes, but like with everything, everyone's oven is different, so just keep an eye on it. The goal here is to get it to be a nice golden brown color. For this recipe, you will need three large sweet potatoes that have been boiled or steamed, cinnamon, pumpkin pie spice, vegan butter, and the most important thing, vanilla vegan marshmallows. All right, let's make this sweet potato casserole. This is one of my favorite dishes. I feel like I keep saying that, but I literally love my plant-based Thanksgiving dishes. They're so, so, so yummy. I do not feel like I'm missing out on Thanksgiving just because I'm not eating turkey. P.S. You are not gonna find a tofurkey on my table, okay? I'm the type of plant-based eater slash vegan that does not like the taste, texture, look, smell of meat. So I'm not trying to have a big turkey on my table, but I do love me some plant-based sides. Mm, this is one of my faves, okay. So I already steamed my sweet potatoes earlier, and now I am just taking off the skins. Better. Let's say a tablespoon, maybe a little less. Stick that in here and mash up our sweet potatoes. Once most of the butter has been mashed and melted, go ahead and do some cinnamon and some pumpkin pie spice. I don't know if you can tell, but for most of my recipes, I try to keep it really, really simple. Simple is the name of the game around. I don't add any sugar to my sweet potatoes because I think that when you boil them, they get really sweet as it is. The only thing that does have sugar in it are the vegan marshmallows, which by the way, yes, if you're trying to eat plant-based and you want marshmallows, you need to make sure they are vegan marshmallows because regular marshmallows have gelatin in them and gelatin is not vegan. Start off 
by boiling them in a pot of water for about five to seven minutes or until they become slightly soft. Medium heat and add some food salt because it will help it boil faster and then it also just helps kind of season the beans. Now let's chop our veggies. When I say chop our veggies, I mean chop our shallot. Shallots. Let's make the sauce. Let's cook this garlic with the shallots and the mushrooms. Pan on medium heat. I have about a tablespoon and a half of vegan butter. I'm going to take a tablespoon of crushed garlic. Let this vegan butter melt just a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and add in my shallots as well. let the shallots and the garlic soften just a little bit and then I'll add in my mushrooms. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of salt and pepper. Then we're going to start making the sauce. So we will start by adding just a little bit more veggie broth. Then we're going to take a little bit of flour and just sprinkle a little bit in. The key to this is going slowly. Just to start to thicken it up. I'm just going to use a fork to begin to thicken up this sauce. Now, before we add this almond milk though, let's turn these green beans off and leave them on there for another, oh my gosh, that's heavy, for another moment before we drain those. And we'll add a little bit of almond milk, four tablespoons. Now I'm going to drain my green beans. So now I'm going to take some of my crispy onions and put them directly into my mixture. Um, and then I'm going to put my green beans in here as well and mix everything together. Mix it up a little bit. Even if you're not plant-based, this is just like such a healthier way to make green bean casserole versus using like canned mushroom soup. It's like so gross. Come on guys. Alright, now I'm going to put it in my dish. Now I'm going to take the rest of my crispy onions and top this off and pop it in the oven. So now I'm just going to pop this in the oven for like 20 to 30 minutes and then it will be ready to eat. For this recipe, you will need one 12 ounce bag of fresh cranberries a dash of maple syrup, a dash of salt, a half a cup of orange juice that's either fresh squeezed or without any sugar added, one fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon, and roughly two thirds cup either brown sugar or I'm using coconut sugar. So this recipe is really simple. We're just gonna combine all the ingredients in a saucepan on low to medium heat and Bring it to almost like a boil and then turn the heat all the way down to low and let it simmer with the top on until everything is nice and cooked down and gelatinized. So one thing I didn't mention in the ingredients is you will need water as well. So half a cup of water, half a cup of orange juice. This one is from Trader Joe's and it's literally just oranges. Dash of maple syrup, just a little bit.
Alright guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. When you do that, it really supports my channel and I really appreciate the support and love. Also, make sure you're subscribed because I upload new videos every single week, two to be exact. And you can also find me on Instagram at Shayla Quinn. Otherwise, thank you so, so, so much for watching. I am incredibly grateful for you and yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.